State, the Honourable Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sands. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Let me put it this way. If you don't want to work in Ottawa during the parliamentary sessions, don't run to be an MP. A hybrid parliament made sense during COVID, but it should never be permanent. I strongly oppose the government's move to make it permanent." Unquote. Madam Speaker, those aren't my words. Those are the words of the Honourable Wayne Easter, the former Liberal Minister and the MP for Malpec for over 20 or almost 28 years in this House. And I note that this statement that Mr. Easter made earlier today was shared on social media by the former Liberal, former Liberal Minister Jane Philpott as well. Before I forget, Madam Speaker, I'm going to share my time with the Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the advantages because it's been brought up and to be fair that some of the speeches, you know, it talks about the sacrifice that members make in the service of Canada uh, to, be a, to be a member of Parliament. But I'd say first and foremost, it's a privilege to be here. It's an absolute privilege and an honour. But to be frank, part of the reason I became, a, uh, you know, and decided to run for office was to have a better work-life balance because compared to my previous life in the military, this is way more flexible and way more easier to balance my work-life balance than it was in the Canadian Armed Forces. So we have people serving our country that don't have the privileges and the options that we have. And I would argue there's lots of Canadians out there, Madam Speaker, because of the dire situations, their economic situation, that they're both, they're, they're working two jobs. They don't have the privilege of virtually attending their work and trying to balance everything. And I'm not trying to take away from any of this, Madam Speaker, I'm just saying it is a privilege to be here and we need to treat it as such. Look, we've had, this, we've had these rules and I've been one that I've used them when I've had to. Um, I'm a single dad half the time. So as a single dad of a, of a nine-year-old, it's very difficult to, to try to balance all of this. My daughter has been here in the chamber, or not in the chamber, up in the gallery or in the lobby. When I was the deputy whip for my party, she even actually got to call the MPs into the House a couple times uh, as we came in for a vote. And voting, I've used, utilized the thing as well, and I actually fully acknowledge that there are dire circumstances or situations, whether it be medical, whether it be uh, a death in the family, whether it be a baby being born, that we shouldn't take away that right for a member to be able to vote. And there where I can see some legitimate uses for the voting app as an example. But I would note we already have had existing tools kicking around Parliament for a long time. We could pair our members of Parliament, right? Uh, you know, because it's a good way to start because there are members face these challenges on a regular basis. One of the arguments we hear, and I, I know the, uh, the, the parliamentary secretary for the, the, the government house leader, you know, is used about the fact that we have used it as some sort of a reason for us not to be able to vote against it. Uh, I'd note, though, if you use the analogy of a, of a sports team, and let's use hockey, for example, you go back to the start of the NHL, uh, back, uh, you know, a hundred and some odd years back, you could not pass the puck forward. It'd be dumb for opposition parties not to utilize the rules that have been forced upon us under this hybrid parliament. You use the rules and you play the game, if, and again, I don't even like using that term, that you're actually forced to use. Why? This isn't a principled issue about fiscal mismanagement or some issue of conscience. This is procedural rules, we'd be dumb not to use them. I want to use an, uh, another quote here, uh, Madam Speaker, and it's, it's from uh, an article here, I don't have exactly who, uh, who wrote it, but uh, it came out of, uh, I believe, the Globe and Mail uh, by, I think, Clark Campbell. Quote, wanted to, if we wanted to find a way to get under fire cabinet ministers into the common without having them to walk past the press, now they don't even have to sneak out the back. There is a real accountability lost if ministers don't have to walk past MPs in their caucus and stand up, acro uh, up across from the opposition. It's a point, Madam Speaker, that again, the press, and it was brought up, I think, by a previous speaker, 
is another tool about holding the government to account. It's just not us in opposition. And when, mem when specifically when ministers of the, of the Crown don't have to be in this House, it's a way for them to avoid those tough questions. Because again, when you're in government, you have to make tough decisions. As well, one of the other things that I don't like about hybrid, I know you've been doing a good job, Madam Speaker, of recognizing, I think, the, the member from uh, New, New Westminster Burnaby, virtually, but I know I've been on virtually plenty of times trying to get attention. I'm sitting there waving my hands on the screen and it's hard to get recognized. That's a lot easier here in the House. But the real point I want to focus on about this whole hybrid that really scares me about, uh, scares me about it, uh, Madam Speaker, is the partisanship. This place is already divisive enough. Partisanship ebbs and flows, obviously, in a parliamentary session. However, I would argue, take the pandemic out of it, that the inability to build the relationships in this House is what actually gets things done. I, I can speak to it numerous examples, even in my short time here since 2019. Shortly after the pandemic broke out, we, the government introduced the Canada Emergency Business Account. I asked a question and question period. I got talking points back from the minister. That was in June of 2020. Brought it up, I believe, in the summer. We were doing those special COVID committee sessions. Again, talking points. September rolled around. I asked again, but this time when I didn't get the answer that I, I desired, I actually basically cornered the minister in the hallway uh, and, and, and explain to her where there was no, because there was no cameras, there was no worrying about being misunderstood and, and getting it reported incorrectly in the media. I was able to actually explain why small businesses that don't have business bank accounts really need to qualify for this because I had many farmers and small businesses in my riding that were failing to meet it. Uh, to, to, to meet it. And again, I wasn't the only MP bringing up this issue to the minister, but I, I swear I saw the light bulb go on and it kind of made that maybe that factor for her to understand the challenges, the issue. And it was shortly after that to give the government credit. They actually made the changes, announced the changes to the program and things got done. And this happens every day almost, Madam Speaker, with opposition MPs and the government ministers. We walk across the way, we talk to them face to face. We don't have to worry about going through staff. I've had that relationship with the Minister of National Defence, the Minister of Immigration, dealing with security clearances with the uh, uh, Member of uh, Procurement and Services, Economic Development and Veterans. And again, this is something that's not new. Uh, I'll quote the press gallery uh, reporter Dale Smith, who I do not think he's real friendly to maybe the Conservative Party, and, he, and he's quoted an article from about a year ago, I believe, that he warns that, you know, this hybrid parliament could fur quote, further erode the relationship building that helps, uh, that better helps parliament function. He, he points to the Samara Institute that was pulled from exit interviews from former MPs. And again, Smith uh, indicated that over time, the House of Commons has become a less friendly place to foster that dynamic. In the chamber, it's harder for backbenchers and opposition MPs to catch minister who now leave to vote on their phones for constituent files that require ministerial in intervention. And again, there's other people I can quote, Madam Speaker. There's John Milo, a professor, a professor of political science and public ethics at Wilfrid Laurier University, who served as the Liberal MPP in Ontario and in uh, Prime Minister Jean Chrétien's office. His quote, just those hours of being able to talk to each other and dare I say, talk to the opposition, unquote, are so important. And Mr. Milloy, uh, you know, talks about in his article or in his references, you know, again, about the voting opportunities, should we use that? But you gotta justify it. So Madam Speaker, in conclusion, in conclusion I just want to offer, I don't think the one peoples that should ever be using hybrid parliament is the actual ministers themselves. I started my speech talking about it's a privilege to be here for all of us as a member of parliament. However, it's even a greater honor and privilege to be a minister of the crown and with that comes sacrifice. And so I just think that the ministers and the parliamentary secretaries should have to participate in debate in this chamber. Conservatives, we've put forward some reasonable amendments that would allow consensus to occur, 
around this motion and keep hybrid in place for the remainder of this parliament, but I can't emphasize enough the risk to partisanship, partisanship if we keep hybrid going forward into the long time future. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Here, here. Questions and comments. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister to National Defence. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And I want to thank my colleague for his speech. I regret the fact I didn't get to listen to his French accent. He speaks very well in French and I encourage him to continue to do so, of course, which is very important. I appreciate the fact that he listed a number of advantages and and he underlined some of the disadvantages that he thought would hybrid. But I have to say that when, when the, I replaced the Member of Parliament with an NDP in opposition for 18 years, and he was able to stay back and do events on a certain night, a certain day, an activity with veterans that I was not able to do between 2015 and 2019 because I couldn't stay back one day to have that event with the member. So I felt that I wasn't able to be as representative as I would have liked to be. Now I'm here all the time, maybe missed five in the last year uh, for a specific reason, dental last, uh, last week, uh, and I'm able to do my duties at home as well as represent my constituency. So I, I just wanted to ask him if he thinks that we can be even more effective when we have both, but not use it uh, just on exceptional basis. The Honourable Member for Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Look, Madam Speaker, we're elected to be here and to be the voice of the people in, o in Ottawa, not the voice of Ottawa back in our constituencies. Here, here, here. And I feel our job is to listen. That's why we have constituency weeks. I actually think we should even sit longer. We, we sit less than most parliaments in, in Western democracies in the world. We should be sitting, I, I, we shouldn't be breaking next week, should we should be going into July. And we should be back at the start of September. We should be start at the back of January. I believe our job is to make sure we work together to make the best legislation that works for all Canadians, not just the, the Canadians that the government is privileged to represent. The Honourable Member for berthier Muskinonge. thank you. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'd like to congratulate my colleague on his excellent speech, and I agree, it's a great privilege to be here, and we should act, therefore, appropriately, and we should constantly and always work uh, to seek the common good. And what are we witnessing this evening? We see the government, the Liberal government, using its fake majority to make something permanent, something that it got by consensus. So, Madam Speaker, this is what's shocking. We're talking about being with one's family, etc., etc. Well, we know it's possible in a non-hybrid parliament to be able to work things out, and we know that everyone's willing to make compromises. But here is that they don't want to discuss it. You could have a dissension, decision through consensus. That's the important thing. I'd like my honourable colleague to comment. The honourable member. Madam Speaker, that's what a number of speakers, I know our House Leader emphasised this so much, the, the member from uh, Perth-Wellington uh, as well, um, you know, highlighted that this is really the purpose of our amendment to the motion, which I think technically is what we're supposed to be debating right now, is the amendment it is just about saying, look, Let's keep this in place. We can accept that. There's parts of it that we don't like, but let's not make it permanent. Let's make it force the government to come back, work with all parties, and I think that consensus that if we just put the sunset clause on this bill, it would be acceptable to all the members here in the House. So I, I just think that's key. It's changing standings orders traditionally for the last 100 plus years has always been done through consensus, not unilaterally with the majority of MPs. Comments. The Honourable Member for Edmonton Strathcona, a brief question. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I'd like to, to thank my colleague for his for his intervention, and, mm. and I know that I've worked very well with him in the House and, and out. We've done meetings on Zoom together. We've been very effective that way, too. Um, even today, 
we were able to talk in the lobby together about some of the work we're doing to, to work to push the government to bring Afghan MPs to Canada to safety. And, and what I want to say to him, I guess, is that it is hybrid parliament right now, and we did that. We Whoa. were in the lobby working together. That was happening. There are people in this House debating right now, but there are also people that are able to stay in their communities because they have other things that they are doing. They might. We have a, we have a member of parliament for the NDP who's going to be having a baby in the very next few days. They have a member of their caucus that just had a baby. There are reasons why hybrid is very, very important. And we can still do the work that we do. We, we did it today. Well, Brief uh, answer from the other member, Bruce Gray, went down. Well, Madam Speaker, I talked about that in my speech, that I'm actually personally open to some exceptions to it, like babies being born, illness, deaths, etc. But my point is, the accountability aspect, that's what bothers me. It's about ministers of the Crown and the parliamentary secretaries being here, being present, and being able to help be held to account because they're the ones that have that privilege of being in government. And our job for all the rest of us members of parliament, even those backbenchers in the Liberal caucus, is to make sure all aspects for Canadians are being represented. Thank you, Madam.